and we go to the tail of the tape. Again, Farmer's been through a lot in his life. He is still only 28 years old, though, now in his prime at 5'6". Guillaume Frenois out of France is 35 years old. He is slightly taller at 5'7", and will have a two-inch reach advantage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the IBF Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, the challenger. He's fighting out of the red corner and he stands with his head trainer, Giovanni Boggio. He wears the gray with red trim. He scaled 129 and one half pounds. His professional record, 46 victories, only one defeat. He has one draw and 12 wins coming by way of knockout. He's the former WBC Mediterranean, IBF International, and European Super Featherweight Champion, fighting out of San Quentin, Ain, France. Please welcome the expert, Guillaume L'Expert. Frenois! Frenois! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He stands with his head trainer, Raul Chino Rivas. He wears the orange trunks and he scaled at 129 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, 29 victories, four defeats, one draw, one no contest, and six wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he makes his fourth defense of his world title, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, introducing the reigning and defending IBF Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Tevin, the American Idol, Second, one chief second red, one chief second blue. Let's clear the ring. Okay, gentlemen, we've already gone over the rules in the dress room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Punches right here and up are gonna be good. These trunks are a little high, so punches right here and up are gonna be good. Gentlemen, watch the hits to the back of the head. Touch gloves. Let's go to work. Sergio, let me start with you. Frenois, the underdog, U.S. debut, the Ready older judge. fighter, Farmer's the Ready champion. Judge. What Ready would judge. you advise Frenois to do early to command respect and maybe set the proper tone? Well, he is 35 years old, so I don't know if he can start out as aggressively know? with the younger Farmer, but Ready if down. he can get some respect right. early, Let's I would go. love for him to see that. Bumps. Get aggressive, win this first round. Show him that you mean business. Round one scheduled for 12. And world title fight at 130 pounds. IBF Junior Lightweight Championship. Tevin Farmer in the multicolored trunks. A little blue and orange in there. And Tevin Farmer out of France in the gray with the red. And there is that high guard, Chris, that you mentioned. Try to stay defensively sound. We'll see if Farmer is able to throw at different levels. Normally, he is very good at that. Hey, yeah, put James Tennyson out with a vicious body shot. And a guy like Frenois, he's proven himself at the regional level, but not yet at this world-class level. Farmer looks comfortable already, landing jabs and body shots. As Frenois presses forward. Farmer, Farmer did not have uh, this luxury against John O'Carroll in March as Carroll came out and was unloading early on Farmer. Sergio, I was surprised to see Farmer get hit that much early on. Look, in retrospect, I know why Farmer did it. No, he wanted to get that respect. Even though Carroll was throwing 1,200, 1,300 punches, he broke box, uh, CompuBox records. Farmer was comfortable in there. He wanted to show that he can fight that type of fight, but it, he ended up outclassing him when he moved and started landing the power boxing, and that, that's when he hurt uh, uh, Carroll. Yeah, we, it was a, a tremendous early pace. Carroll was landing hard combinations and body shots early, but Farmer able to make the adjustments. Controlled range as the fight progressed and outpointed Carroll through the second half of the fight, able to hurt him late as well. I was, I was a, it was a war. If you look back at that fight and you look at the scores, you'll say, okay, so he won that easily against an underdog coming across the pond, but that was a tough fight. And Friend Wild looks very tentative early on. It's Tevin Farmer that's throwing most of the punches in this first round. And that took to the body. I love that, that punch by Farmer right there. He's, he's setting up something for later, but it's a solid punch. Tapping, tapping jab as well, Sergio, from Farmer. His shoulders completely relaxed while Frenois is up tense and tight. 
tense, tight, jittery, and Farmer loose, comfortable, looking for the right shot to catch Frenois coming in. Oh, Frenois is 46 1 and 1, obviously vastly experienced, but he's going to have to guard his energy as Farmer is easily able to get away from those shots. Just able to pick his spots and snap out a jab, throw a hard jab out there as he gets his range. Moving back and forth, showing Keep off the Keep lateral up, movement, Keep firing off a sharp jab. Fewer tassels from Farmer than we've seen in the Stop. past, isn't it? I usually don't go the fashion route, but I'm used to seeing things flying Ten as seconds, he's Warriors. dancing around. Ten seconds. End of round one here in the co-feature. Main event is to come. There's Maurice Hooker. Bud Crawford, welterweight champion, former undisputed junior welterweight champ. Coming off a knockout win over Amir Khan, one of the best fighters in the world. And these guys get along quite well. He's friends with Errol Spence, friends with Bud Crawford. Maurice Hooker just quiet. Conserving his energy, getting ready for another big fight. You know, this, they all become bigger and bigger fights as you go. But this is, you know, the guy who wins this fight, big things away, Chris. Absolutely. When you give it the it sets up a unification fight. Regis Progray, Josh Taylor. We're probably going to see that fight in the fall on the zone. The winner of that fight can have a chance to do what Terrence Crawford did. Like an undisputed 140-pound champion. Again, there's a lot of belts out there. There's four mainly, and you've got four titles. Progray is scouting, perhaps. He'll face Josh Taylor in the World Boxing Super Series. Those two hold belts as well. It would be fantastic, and as it always is, if you can provide some clarity in the division, at the very least for fans, for fans to look and know who's the champ and not say, wait, I thought he was the champ. There's another champ? Oh, there's three other champs? It's confusing. You don't want to have to make fans work at it. And we could say, look, tonight, Maurice Hooker, Jose Ramirez, both worthy titles. But it used to be there was one champion. I know a lot of times there was two, sometimes there's three. But if there's one, it really brings clarity to the sport and the division. Well, nowadays, there's three in one weight class at the same time. So that's problematic. No, oh, four. Uh, depending on if you got a WBO, you got an IBF. You well, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking, I'm sorry, but one sanctioning body. Is oh, what I'm oh, oh. So, <laughs> For each one, I try to at least blow through that. You see a wide discrepancy there in 13 to 2 in the early rounds. First round, it's easy work for Tevin Farmer. He's able to fire off shots. Frenois will have to do something different. I don't know if it's Sergio within his capability to do it, but he's going to have to come up with something different, change angles, move forward, move back, do something. What can he do? This is his first fight in the U.S., and he's finally he's fighting a well-rounded boxer in Farmer, champion in Farmer. So he's not used to seeing this. He's used to seeing maybe a different type of style. Wicked right hook just barely missed right there by Farmer. Yeah, Farmer is so relaxed. And you see on the back of the trunks, Pernell Whitaker printed there for Tevin Farmer in honor of the all-time great lightweight champion, welterweight champion. He passed away two weeks ago. We spoke about at the top of the telecast. And of course, he's honoring Maxime Dadashev on those trunks as well. R.I.P. Mad Max on the sides. Frenois looks very jittery in there. Like very, uh, there's a lot of uh, nervous energy right there. That that's, that's not really coming across too nicely right there because it's Farmer that looks very comfortable in there. Even though they're both not doing anything, it's Farmer that looks in control. Well, let's be clear too. Frenois has done nothing to earn this title shot. His last fight was a draw against John O'Carroll. Before that, he had beaten nobody of note. He just, the rankings here perplexed me. This is a mandatory. It was ordered by the IBF. And he was ranked third, and yet no one was ranked number two or number one. So explain that. You, you make yourself crazy trying to figure this out. Uh, you can at least say that, well, they both fought the same competitor the last time out, and Frenois did get a draw. Uh, normally, that wouldn't warrant a title shot. You are. Absolutely correct. And the blood now is flowing, I believe, from the nose of Frenois. Yes, blood is flowing now, and it's getting on his chest as well. So any one of these hard shots coming from Farmer doing some damage here in round two. Tevin, keep him up. Let's go, Blue. 
Do you think that's broken, Sergio? No, not yet. I think uh, another another strong jab will get his bleeding again. It's hard to stop uh, blood from flowing in uh, one minute of arrest. Tevin Farmer, IBF Junior Lightweight Champion. In a good rhythm here, relaxed. Both rounds, Chris Mannix, you give it to Farmer, clearly. And he was able to land one good shot, Frenois was, in that last round. And he's going to have to try to change the equation. It's going to be difficult because it's not like you're just not having success. It's that you're just being outboxed by a calm world champion who has better defense and, and better offense. One thing, smoother. And one of the things Tevin Farmer said to us is that he loves fighting southpaws because it becomes a speed against speed matchup. And he believes there isn't a southpaw out there that has better speed than he does. And he had a lot more difficulty with John O'Carroll, even though Carroll coming out of Ireland was not so highly celebrated. But Carroll was more squat, muscular, and was able to dig to the body and had enormous energy. Frenois, more of a traditional boxer up top and just not fast enough, it appears right now, to be hanging with Farmer. Yeah, he's a little bit too stiff to, to get yeah, Farmer off guard right now, out. but that's the European style. They fight behind the jab, out. they fight upright, and that's not really uh, doing the job with Farmer, who's a little bit more loose and elusive in there. Uh, foot feigning, fighting behind the jab, speed. Look at all those punches. Combination by Frenois missing there, but slapping a little bit. Nothing landing right there. Watch the back of the head, Gagnon. Farmer starting to tap to the body. Blocked by Frenois with the elbows down tight. Fires off a left hand that looked like it could have scored. Body shots by Farmer. Farmer is, you know, again, this, this looks one-sided already, but Farmer, to me, Sergio, is a joy to watch just to see the style and see the work. This is a guy that looks like he's just enjoying his boxing workout. No, he really is a, a special fighter. He goes, he doesn't forget the body. He, he knows how to fight like a southpaw, but he's a tough fighter in the inside as well. He fights in the inside, on the outside, body shots. Yeah, body shot finishing there with a right hook to the head. And look at how jittery it is, he is. He doesn't do it in a nervous jittery. He's doing it to, to get Frenois to commit to something, to counter back. A lot of feints from Farmer. It's perpetual movement just to get Frenois to, to react. He'll move in and out, side to side. They trade shots. Frenois unable to establish an effective jab so far. And that would be his one shot, again, with a slight height advantage, reach advantage. At the very least, fighting, you know, in a European amateur style to be able to fire out a, a long jab, but he's not able to find his range. Good body shot in the inside by Farmer. Or his target, by the way. Farmer's just difficult to hit. You're not, it's difficult to hit him cleanly in the head. Frenois trying, but Frenois missing so far. Beautiful performance. Outstanding. That's what I'm talking about. He's going down. Listen, the jab itself is fucking disrupting him. Okay? Keep that jab in his face. His right eye starting to get slow. He's losing his nose. He's getting desperate. His elbows up high because he's more worried about the top. Here we see. Yeah, not yet. Tevin Farmer looking like Neil from The Matrix. Punches flying, missing, everything just untouchable right there. Just beautiful defense by Tevin Farmer, the champ. And here we see a, a clash of heads, total accident right there. That happens a lot with southpaws. But we're going to see that, that nose continue to bleed from Frenois. Sergio, if you're in the corner, you're Chino Rivas, who is an excellent trainer, does great work with Farmer. They have a great connection together. Would you just want to see him box the night away, or would you emphasize anything different? No, box the night away. Frenois is going to give you chances to get more aggressive because he's coming in aggressive. If you can catch him coming in, you can hurt this man. Chris Mannix giving all three rounds so far to the champion. I can see Frenois getting up. Over, over aggressive and, and running into something, a sharp punch by, by Farmer. So I just think Farmer needs to stay patient and catch him with a counter coming in. You know, I've seen Farmer go to the head a lot more these last couple of rounds. That feels to me, Sergio, like he's trying to set up that body shot, keep that guard of Frenwell up as high as possible to set up that big body shot down below. You mentioned that earlier, and yeah, I could totally see it. From the beginning of the, of the fight in the first round, the best, the, one of the best punches that Farmer landed was a left hand to the body. And he continues going downstairs with it. 
And Farmer landing over 50% of his power shots. Franois 15%, landing just 10. Wide discrepancy in every way. Body shots there landing by Farmer. And he throws them in bunches. Good combinations. Just sharp body punches right there. Frenois unbeaten over the last six years, 15-0-1. But again, this is his first trip to the United States, and he does so in a world championship fight. He's fought 42 times in France, never outside of Europe. So this is a big step up at the age of 35. Again, he's won, you heard, at the David Diamante announcing you know, multiple belts and titles, regional and European titles, but there is clearly a gap then, Sergio, when you get to, you're not just world champion, but world titleist in this case, the top three, four fighters in a weight class. No, absolutely, and that's what happens when you just keep fighting in your hometown, your home uh, country. You need to get out and, and you need to fight different styles of fighting. Right now he's getting a taste of that because he can't touch Farmer. Final minute of round four. The main event still to come, Maurice Hooker, Jose Ramirez, which should be an outstanding junior welterweight unification bout. Super lightweight, if you like. WBO, WBC belts are on the line. Always good to see unification fights. And two guys in their prime, undefeated, getting after it. The type of fight that you could see either camp saying, you know what, do we need that? No. Like, if you're in Hooker's side, do we need Jose Ramirez? Ah, maybe, maybe not. If you're Ramirez, you could say, hey, why, why do we have to go to Dallas and fight Hooker? And yet they did it. I give them both credit, Chris. Final seconds of round number four. Tevin Farmer putting in the work, winning the rounds, clearly, and seemingly easily here in Arlington, Texas. At the end of this round, we go to Claudia Trejos. Claudia? Thank you, Brian. I was talking to Mehdi Lafifi, who is also his manager, uh, and he was explaining to us that Lexburg is waiting to come in more active in the second half of the fight. The idea was to tire Tevin Farmer out and then come in and work and take the fight in the last round. I'm not sure that's working. Yeah, I don't see that getting better, Claudia. I think you have a good point. According to CompuBox, by the way, half of Farmer's landed shots are body shots. The CompuBox average is about 28%. Pass him. Pass him when he does the work. Beautiful work. Okay, now remember, every 10 seconds, I finish strong, okay? Every 10 seconds, okay? Finish strong. Tevin Farmer has won 22 in a row after winning just two of his first five fights. Started with a record of 7-4-1. and one. Takes a while before you can put it all together for him, at least. To put together the team, his own motivation, get everything together. And, you know, much like the guys in the main event, fellas, it's, it's really heartening to see how someone can turn their career around and become an enormous success doing everything holistically and seriously overachieving fighter becoming a world champion you know how difficult that is brian is because you get discouraged not only with with the boxing but with the business of boxing and if you're you're getting stopped early in your career normally the the climb up to the top is going to be even difficult but that just shows the character that that tevin farmer has and to become a champion and to be unbeaten in 22 fights and to overcome what he's become and that's the reason he's here doing what he's doing as a champion. It, does, it builds a reservoir of character that you can call upon. Even in a fight like John O'Carroll last March where you're not supposed to be tested. It's someone that shouldn't be at your level. And then suddenly you find that guy is motivated for the fight of his life. You've got to dig deep. You've got to be ready to answer that call. Farmer was able to do that. He was. And look, he's been looking for those big fights. He's craving those big fights. But to your point earlier, Brian, about Jose Ramirez and Maurice Sucker not needing each other, I think they did. I think they badly needed each other because if they fought somebody else, nobody would care. Nobody would be interested in that type of fight. It's the same thing that we're dealing with now in boxing. It was less than a month ago work. where we had Let Demetrius go, Andrade go. No holding, blow out a mandatory challenger. On that same weekend, we had Jamal Charlo fight and blow out an opponent. Now we have Tevin Farmer, 
on the same weekend Gervonta Davis is fighting. These are two different promotional companies, PBC and with Matchroom. How about we all get together and one promotional company and one network gets Farmer versus Davis and one promotional company and one network gets Andrade versus Charlo. We are seeing the best of boxing tonight with two promoters working together to make a big fight. Can we please have saner heads prevail? Oh, no question. It's just been over the last few years as has a free. pieces have fallen together in different entities right. where we've seen fighters, if it's not in their best interest, play it safe. We've seen top fighters match against each other and then what could have been, you know, say 20 years ago, a great rematch right away. It doesn't happen. It's just difficult to see. That's why I think this is just heartening to see these two get together. Right, and now they create a lot of buzz for each other right away. Yeah, they do. And look, I, this this is a mandatory, and I sat in the lobby with Tevin Farmer yesterday, and we looked on my laptop at the other IBF top-ranked fighters. It's probably not somebody you want to see him fight next. we got to get these guys together in big fights. Farmer looking back tonight. really sharp right here. I mean, he's putting oh. some extra heat in these body shots. I think he's, he's moving forward, trying to get that respect from Frenois. Oh, Farmer's doing great work. Well. Farmer's a complete pro. That's the, the picture that we're painting, and he is going to work hard every single round, as he just did. It's you who will decide, Guy. You can be the champion of the world or not. Now you have to work harder and harder, closer and closer. And then, blue. You don't know. You go up and down, up and down. If you do that, he'll be dead. Now he's starting to really hit. So really, you have to start now. Be hard with yourself and be harder with him. Right here, we're gonna see the. Uh, Excellent defensive prowess by Tevin Farmer, just making Frenois miss everything. It's like the Matrix Part Two right here, and <laughs> Frenois not not looking like le expert in that sequence. And a little impatience in his corner, probably good advice though. Like, look, you've got to make it happen and make it now. He's starting to throw harder shots. They're recognizing Sergio that Tevin Farmer's starting to dig in a little more. It's round six. He's not winning any rounds. Something has got to happen if he hopes to have a chance at winning this fight. Not just getting through it, but winning. And by doing that, by getting more aggressive, it's gonna get it's gonna open up more opportunity for Farmer to land something big as well. Counter there by Frenois. A little danger there as Farmer. All arm punches, nothing landed. Those are the shots right there. Straight left hand by Farmer. Digging downstairs. Trying to the body and a good crisp left hand to the jaw. Digs in with a right hand to the body and a left to the body. And those body shots, he's just digging away Farmer. Is. Farmer very fluid, very skilled. Now able to get his range, he fires a jab to the body. Stop. Not behind the back, not behind the back. We're gonna keep this clean, we got it? Here we go, let's Mark box. Malloy, effective there, calling it out properly. Frenois trying with the left hand. Farmer able to get out of the way. Lands there to the side of the head, so Frenois starting to have a little more success. Yeah, chopping right hands by Frenois, straight lefts right there. And he said he got hit low. As they both exchanged, Frenois says it happened. They both jumped in, maybe. Farmer, we haven't seen him fight dirty really at any point. Maybe he was firing his shot already as Frenois came in. Now, Farmer's as polished as they get. Total accident. Okay. Tevin, now Tevin, keep him up. All right. Here we go. Let's go. Mark Malloy with the time in. The warning, and he too, just as we saw earlier with Lawrence Cole, you know, waiting a decent amount of time for the fighter to be ready to come back out. Frenois now trying to load up with that left hand. At least he has tried. Traps Farmer in the corner. Farmer is moving his head. Look at this. With Sweet Pea on his trunks. Defensive excellence. Beautiful to watch. Able to land with the left hand. Frenois with a little more success in this round. He's definitely digging in a little more and fires off another left. Yeah, there's some fight in Frenois. He's coming aggressive. He's not landing anything cleanly, but he's going for it at yeah, least. a few. One or two here and there. Got some few glancing ones, but the, 
he's trying. That's what, yeah. that's an important point. I'm still trying to figure out the strategy of tiring out the fighter that's extremely used to going the distance. Don't hold. Don't hold. I'm not sure how that and doesn't burn his energy in an inefficient manner. You know, you're not going to tire out Farmer at any point. You know, I think John O'Carroll had a, a much better plan. I'm, I'm going to come in and just throw wicked body shots and cut this guy in half. He wasn't able to do that, but he was able to make it very interesting and make it for a very tough fight. Here, not so much. Frenois trying to do a little more in round six, a little more success, but Farmer able to move his head beautifully again. And again. Body shots ripping from Farmer. And a right hand, and again, gorgeous combinations by the champion. Vicious body shots, man. I love these body shots by Farmer. Big answer there by the champ. And let's go to Claudia Trejos. Thank you, Brian. I was having a chat with uh, Coach Chino Rivas, and he knows that Tevin is taking the win easily and wants him to keep boxing, keep the distance. Yet, it's Tevin who wants to stay in the pocket and keep punching. It's Not Tevin it. who wants to take this win via knockout. But okay. Coach Rivas is insisting, you need the rounds, take it easy, do not expose yourself. Let this play out the way it's supposed to be. Do not expose yourself. But let's see who has more power, the coach or the fighter. Back to you. Don't pull back, stand back. Roll under, slim fly, and keep your hands up. Do not pull back with your hands open, okay? I'm getting, I'm getting Here we're going to see the low blow Farmer landed, but in a way, if you're going to see Frenwa kind of put his elbow on top of Farmer's head, inadvertent shot to the body, warned, and here we're going to see Frenwa just punch away and land nothing cleanly on Neil from the Matrix there, a.k.a. Tevin Farmer. How many Matrix movies were there? Is that Matrix 3? Is there are three Matrix movies, and you get one more Matrix movie. Okay, that's it. <laughs> We could give Sergio unlimited Matrix references. It's just beautiful to watch. I love defense. Great left hand there. I love defense because it's so difficult to do when someone's unwailing on you like that to make them completely miss like that. It's just beautiful to watch. Hardest thing to do in the world, stand right in front of someone, make them miss. Farmer able to do that. Second half of this fight. IBF junior lightweight title at stake. Tevin Farmer with the uh, less impressive record coming in, but he's the world champion, 29-4-1. and one. He's won 22 in a row. He has, again, taken advantage of the new DAZN landscape and has stayed busy. A lot of fighters, you mentioned Demetrius Andrade earlier, Chris. Nice and clean. Boy will touch gloves, touch gloves. Tell them to keep it touch clean. Touch gloves, touch gloves. Well, he's Let's gonna go. insist on that. It's box. Well, friend walk thought Farmer went low. I thought he hit right on the belt line. He responded with a bit of a cheap shot of his own. Hard body shot there by Farmer, and that was borderline as well from Farmer. Now, I mentioned Farmer, a guy who went through a lot of frustrations in his career, as did Demetrius Andrade, and as soon as they had the opportunity to fight often, they have taken advantage. Fifth fight inside of one year for Tevin Farmer. He beat Billy Dibb, James Tennyson, Francisco Fonseca, and then John O'Carroll. Farmer walking down Frenois now with no respect, going upstairs and downstairs, landing some really good body shots, getting aggressive on Frenois. Yeah, completely calm, shoulders relaxed, snapping out an effective jab. When he gets inside, he's throwing combinations to the body. Aggressive, but still conscious of defense. Benoit staying out of range now. Farmer walking Frenois down, cutting off the ring, not letting Frenois breathe. Hard left hand to the body by Farmer, still snapping out a jab, falling short there. And Frenois coming right back. Nothing landed, but he's trying to counter. Chopping shots by Frenois, and who has a reach and height advantage. Not an awful lot, but a little bit. But yeah, his only chance is to be hyper aggressive, get rough. And it's, he's just not built to fight that way. It doesn't seem it's part of his fighting identity. Not his style, but he has this caginess in him, Frenois does. I've seen some, 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 some toughness in him. Like, he, he, has, he has confidence and he has this, uh, this swag about him. Like well, he wants to land something, but Farmer's not giving him anything. Yeah, he's fought mostly in France, Sergio, but he's 46, 1 and 1. Stop! You know, that's yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's piled some up some wins in his back career. In Got it? Here we go. He's Let's in go. top shape. Giving it everything he can. He's, he's out proud, out skilled. He's a proud fighter. You can see the, the pride in his eyes, in his face. Trying now with the jab. Sticking out a long jab there as Farmer moves in and lands to the body. Those are hard shots by Farmer. Those aren't flurry. Those, those are pretty pet punches. Those are hard punches upstairs. 
And it is a great style matchup. It's an outstanding unification matchup. Two fighters in their prime. That's the main event. Here, Tevin Farmer defending his IBF junior lightweight title. And Chris Mannix every round to Tevin Farmer. Chris doesn't even have to comment. I'll let, I mean, you know, can. I'll let you know when that changes. Look, Devin Farmer, <laughs> especially in that last round, I thought that was one of his more dominant rounds. Going to the body aggressively, flurrying. He was excellent. Dominant and aggressive, but he's still a defensive fighter. He's still conscious of not getting hit. And that's what reminds you of, of, of the, the, the defensive prowess of a great southpaw, just like we talked about earlier in Pernell Whitaker. But the first thing they do is not get hit. They remind their opponents of that, not to get hit. And, and then aggressively when you're ready to do the, the, the offensive punching. Several right hands there in the last 10 seconds. Hard to the body by Tevin Farmer and able to come up top to the head. He might be able to do some real damage here. Maybe get Frenois out. Frenois taking more shots. As you mentioned in the last round, Sergio, he is a man with a lot of pride. Came in here in good shape, wanting to win. Trying to, this is the opportunity of his lifetime, of his career, but he is just faced, facing right now just a very tough fighter at the height of his power and skill. And at 35 years old, this is his, his last opportunity to become champion. See the jab and the movement right away. Great rhythm by Farmer. You know, so many feints, Sergio. I mean, you look at this, as you mentioned, constant movement. Snapping, look at this, moving side to side with his head. He moves with his feet, changes eye level, throws different shots, no, great variance. It's beautiful to watch because he's, he's, he's feigning with his feet. He's feigning with his shoulders, his arms. He's giving perpetual motion, his upper body movement. But he's, he's, not, really, he's not really punching. He's putting this, this physical pressure on you. And then when he does unleash, they're just fast, crisp punches. Extremely fluid. Farmer here in round eight. And to his credit, Chris Mannix, as I mentioned earlier, he is he wants Gervonta Davis. And then Jojo Diaz looks terrific in his last fight. He's like, yeah, fine, you too. Why like, you know, he, he seems to want these big fights. It'd be great to see him get those big fights. Yeah, it would be. And there are some makeable fights for him if he continues working with Matchroom over the next year. Jojo Diaz is available. Andrew Cancio, who was terrific in back-to-back -back wins over Alberto Machado. He has made himself a legitimate name in that division. There are big chances for Tevin Farmer if these fights can be made. Farmer walking down Frenois now. The, the change in body language to me has changed. Farmer's backing up Frenois. I don't see him as eager to engage or, or, or throw combinations or try to land anything on Farmer. Farmer just taking the fight away from the Frenchman. Time! Go to your corner. No, 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 hey. We're through round eight here in our co-feature. Earlier tonight, we got another look at young Ammo Williams. It was a quick knockout. Sergio, you were calling this fight. Your thoughts on Emma Williams for those who weren't watching earlier tonight. Anytime a young prospect goes down to the body like that, I'm always impressed. Emma Williams has a really bright future, staying active, big smile on his face, and he's just a bright young man. The future, sky's the limit with this young kid. Emma Williams staying undefeated. Again, the type of fighter that starts to climb on the card. You know, you, you've done that, Sergio. You start fighting to some, you know, left, 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and eventually you work your way up to 10 p.m. Left, left, yeah. Maybe 11.30 p.m. Yeah, I want to left the hook up and top, then come back to the liver. You understand that? Seven Farmer's headline fights, but he is the type of fighter that is able to take a co-feature as well to stay busy, stay active, and you know what? Build a fan base. Let people see you every three, four months. Get used to seeing you and want to see you. Look, the alternative to fighting big fights twice a year is being as active as Tevin Farmer's been. It's not ideal, but he is doing everything he can do to make his name in boxing. I think everybody has kind of you know, just gotten used to like the, you know, what became the Floyd Mayweather plan. Let me fight in May, let me fight in September, then I'm good. It's like, yeah, yeah, once you've, like, you know, won four divisions and you're, you're a superstar, sure, but not when you're on your way up or you just have one belt in a, in a, in a in a division. You need to be out there, build fans. And again, that was done on a regular basis 20, 30 years ago. Absolutely. Unifications matter. They increase the stature of a guy, make it much more marketable. Guys should be fighting, I think, at least three times a year. 
<laughs> maybe farmers planting that seed and, and, and showing the champions how they should be staying active. Well, look, I think the blueprint was laid out, you know, five, six years ago by Gennady Golovkin because he could not get any of the big names to step in the ring with him. Sergio Martinez, later on Miguel Cotto. So he stayed active and fought the top rated guys until he eventually made himself so appealing that he got some big names in the ring. Daniel Jacobs, Pedro Alvarez, and on from there. See friend Wild landing at just a, a rate of 16 percent. I've seen that too. Actually, years ago, Hasim Rahman would fight guys just off TV, kept fighting. But next thing you know, he's got five, six wins in a year, and you're like, oh wait, he's back in the picture. You can get yourself out there. And look, this is not. You know, Tepin Stop. is not being tested by, but just getting into the ring, having another title defense. It, it is worth an awful lot to be out there and fighting, going through the camp, going through the motions, getting out here and fighting on TV. Yeah, but it's a big difference here. Those guys you mentioned, Rockman and Golovkin, were knocking guys out. Farmer's having to go the distance with these guys. That speaks volume for this champion. To go 12 rounds consistently, five times in 51 weeks, that just shows the character and the temperament of this champion. Well, Farmer has the hunger of a guy who is 2-2-1, two, two and one, and he was that guy. So he's coming in saying, well, I, I, I'll stay in camp. You know, Sturgeo, you go from most guys are in camp. It's not like you're in camp. Like, you're boxing. You're at the gym every day. And then suddenly, well, it becomes camp, and then I'll go away, and then I'll come back. Some fighters say, well, there's no camp. I'm always in camp. I'm always boxing. And strike while the iron's hot right now. He's yeah. the champion, making these defenses, getting good paychecks, staying busy, staying active, staying sharp, keeping his name in lights. It's all around a good thing for Tevin Farmer. I would say this to you, Sergio. I think fighters need to have more responsibility in getting big fights made. If Tevin Farmer and Gervonta Davis told their managers respectively, get in the room and make a deal, something tells me a deal would be made. That's what the main event is for, Chris. Right now we're seeing Farmer staying active. I mean, this is 50 you events. Love, he's staying active. He's, he's beating whoever they put in front of him. Frenois corner. Exhorting him and upset. Please, please, please. You say, please. Écoute, no. listen. Si tu veux l'avoir, si tu crois que tu peux l'avoir, tu veux la, tu vas l'avoir. Là, il était shooté. Il était out. Les gens les ont fait comme ça toutes les deux. Tu vas gagner par KO. Dix cent douze. C'était round à toi. Tu vas le foutre en bas. Plus si tu putting on put on the floor. Once he is shadowing you, then he's going to hit him first. That's what you've got to do first. Hit, hit him first. Hit the first. Then he can't do more. Attack the first. Attack the first. Yes. Giovanni Bogia there in the corner for Guillaume Frenois. Out of France making his U.S. debut in a world title fight here, challenging. They wanted to get off first, and he opens up round 10 doing just that. Chris Mannix has every round the champion, Tevin Farmer. Frenois trying to change the equation here. I believe they thought Sergio in Frenois' corner that he had somewhat of an opportunity there in the final seconds and was unable to take advantage. Easier said than done. I think right. uh, Farmer's pitching a shutout here, looking really sharp. Especially the body. I'm really impressed with the body shots he's been going after. And, and that alludes to what Chris said earlier, is the fact that Frenois keeps his hands really high and opens up them body shots. That's probably what Chino Rivas and, and Tevin Farmer saw when they studied this man. Break! Break! Farmer coming off a tough fight. And you can understand that this is good work for him and a good night for him. He says, Frenois says he got hit over there again. Time! Over there. The first one looked borderline. The second one definitely wasn't low. I don't, I don't believe it was. I didn't get a good look to see if it was as low. His corner is know when you're ready. extremely upset. The first one may have been low, the second one wasn't, but... You ready? You stay right there. You stay right there. Let's we'll see it again. Tevin, over here. Over here. One point. Wow. Low blow. One point. Low blow. Over here. Omar Kaloy saw it. One point. Low blow. 
Oh, well, there goes a the no-hitter. Keep him up. All right, here we go. And this friend was corner. They're upset, but look, give give Kaloy credit. Bucks. Maybe he's influenced by that somewhat, but again, it's another low shot, so that's the second one. And if it was, it doesn't matter if you mean it or not. If you did it, you did it. And he takes a point away from Tevin Farmer. Farmer goes right back to work on the body. Hard body shots again. Now they're trading. Frenois maybe have an opportunity here. If Farmer wants to stay in close, uppercut by Frenois. Big uppercut by Farmer. Those body shots taking their toll on Frenois, but he keeps firing. This might be his opportunity. Farmer up for a little... A little dust up here. He didn't like the fact that they took away that point. Farmer coming out aggressively, especially downstairs. I'll make this a little more exciting. That'd be nice. Look, he's winning rounds. He doesn't know us action, but it would be entertaining. Frenois definitely aggressive now with a rare opportunity to make something happen against a very difficult defensive fighter. A jab landing there by Frenois, and then a left hand, but another good jab there by Farmer. Chopping punches being landed by Frenois there. Body shot by Farmer again. He's landing so many of those. Frenois with the uppercut, firing off miss with the left hand. Farmer able to stay in close, land with hooks and uppercuts just scraping shots to the body that are even difficult to see. But they're landing. Look at that shot. Right hand to the body by Farmer. Action picking up a bit here in round 10. After a night of easy work by the champ. Body shot again by Farmer going down low. It's a physical fight for two southpaws with not a high knockout ratio, but very entertaining round here. Round right back, and that's it. Okay, so you didn't lose that round. So nine nine. Easy round to score. Listen, do me a favor. It's the last round. Walk it that down. It's left. Last two rounds. Let's walk them down. Okay. Just like you just did that round. He's done. He has no answer for it. Do not take a step back. Now make sure. With the head, the head. After the first. You see what they're doing? Each time. Here we're going to see that Franois was actually pulling Farmer's head down, and I think that's what strayed that punch low, but I don't think it was intentional. It was below the belt, but you see the, the, the forearm behind the neck of Farmer there. Another warning would have been just for me. Pignon, do not yeah, push him right, down, Sergio, okay? I think you're right, Sergio. The pulling down of the head created that situation. And yet he hit him low again. You know? And so Colloid jumps out, takes a point away, and Farmer comes out quickly here in round 11. I'd like to see him put, a, put his foot down on the gas pedal. Seems to be doing that. Body shots, he said he got hit low. You better defend yourself. Push him down, Daniel. Renoir's got to keep going. Renoir better fight instead of complain. And you heard the referee there say, don't push his head down then. Well, he's frustrated as well because Farmer is going down so low so often. And when he turns his back and turns his head, you can't hit him legally. So there's a bunch of things going on at the same time. Farmer creating a blistering early pace here in round 11. You see the type of conditioning and just what a relaxed fighter he is in the ring that he's able to come out and just slap it into a new gear in the 11th round. It is interesting that Frenois, again, was able to get a draw with John O'Carroll, who tested Farmer, but Frenois is not able to really seriously test the champion, Tevin Farmer. Just not matching up that way. You know what I enjoy here, Sergio, in this round, is that the champ comes out, he's winning all these rounds, and he came out and he worked. You know, you don't have to throw your hands and say, I gotta knock this guy out, but he's, he's working, he's doing work in this round. Especially the early part of the round, he came out aggressive, Stop! digging downstairs, now he's boxing, moving away. There you go. Oh, 
Final minutes of the 11th round. Again, the main event. Two overachieving, hardworking fighters who have become champions. Not looking for the safe route, unbeaten. Both have title belts, both in their prime. Maurice Hooker and Jose Ramirez. Left hand there by Francois. I would say offensively, this is the most success that Fran Fran Francois has had, actually. Nothing landed cleanly, but at least glancing shots are landing. Now touching him, able to land there. Firing off the left hand. Missed with that one. <laughs> Hard uppercuts by Farmer. Land to the body. Stop! 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 Box. Renoir firing after sections. And we have one round to go. That was a good round by Farm, by our friend Mark. Last 20 seconds, like you just did, that your slip is getting, letting the judges, regardless if he's not hitting you, but the judges could see something different. You understand that? Yep. We just marked for that shit. Don't do that again. Yes, all you gotta do is just move around with the jab. He, he, he saying nothing he can do when you're moving with that jab. Instead of just staying there for 20 seconds without throwing a shot and going on defense. So you understand that? Don't do that again. We just marked for that. We're too classy for that shit. Here we're gonna see the low blow. That was that was low. Two, three shots. Frenois complaining to the referee. Farmer acknowledging it, but you gotta you gotta keep your hands up and keep fighting. You know. Frenois' defense there, but he was clearly low. He wasn't putting his head down. And so he could say, wait, you took a point away in the last round. Now I got hit <laughs> low there. I get point. It's just OK? All right. Touch gloves. We're going to keep it clean. Here we go. World right. championship, gentlemen. Box like champions. Here we go. Let's box. Mark Malloy there with the instructions. And you heard Chino Rivas in the corner. Sergio, the main thing he was saying there is, don't do that again. Yeah. You know, you're too smart. He wants him to box. Don't stay in there and trade for 20 second intervals. But you know, Farmer enjoys it. He likes it. He likes the combat. But he's a better boxer. Now he's up, moving, dancing. See the high level of conditioning. Body shots moving out of the way. Now he's boxing and moving. And there's still fight in Frenwall. I mean, he's, he's like a, he's a gritty, frisky fighter. He's still coming forward. He's being outclassed by Farmer, far in, in a boxing sense, but he's still trying. Chris Mannix, round 11. Thought he was a little more active, front wall. Landed some clean shots. His best offensive round. Farmer, not quite as active. Okay. So, Frenois taking a round, according to our card, the official card. As Tevin Farmer is able to now get up. On his toes, do his little boxing. Frenois yeah. landing with a left hand. Yeah, I agree with Chris there. I think that that was a Frenois round. And uh, if Farmer was pitching a no-hitter, that, that round actually just gave it up. Yeah, Frenois has been outclassed and at times discouraged. He has never quit. He's never not tried. Oh, another chopping left hand. Now he's able to land. Two left hand by Frenois. Yeah. The first one was solid. A little more aggression. Would be too little too late. Certainly does look like that. Good one-two combination by Tevin Farmer straight up the middle. And now back with his defensive mastery. Farmer is a hard man to hit. Renoir having limited success but has tried all night long. This is what happens when desperation kicks in. When, when you're the fighter behind on points, you have nothing to lose. All of a sudden, the guy that's in charge, the champion in charge, Farmer, he just wants this fight to get over with. This guy wasn't going anywhere, and it just gives Renoir some 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 opportunity to at least have a moral victory and win the last two rounds. Final minute. See the movement by the ropes. Farmer slipping and sliding the night away, but has outlanded Frenois throughout the night. Has done the work. It appears he will defend his title one more time. Gervonta Davis won tonight. Tevin Farmer is on his way to winning tonight. We need to see Tevin Farmer versus Javante Davis. Frenois with a snapping left hand that landed. Late success for the Frenchman. By far the best round for Frenois. He landed three, four solid left hands. 
There's another one. In the final seconds of this fight, again, Te Tevin Farmer has rounds in the bank. Frenois gave it his best shot. Time! Has just come up short. Too Six little, steps. too late. Yep, in the 12th and final round for Frenois. But Tevin Farmer did the work, crisp action. And just good boxing all night long, as we have come to expect from this man. He's a fighter, Sergio, who won 18 straight to get a shot at Kenichi Ogawa in 2017. And from there, after that was ruled a no contest, he went on to win the belt. And now he has won fight after fight and gets another title defense here. Again, fourth title defense, fifth title fight in one year. How about that? Old school. That's old school fighting right there by a champion in Tevin Farmer. Just staying busy, staying active, defending this championship. Really impossible by Farmer. Chris Mannix basically gave the last two to Guillaume Prenois. There's a point deduction there in the ninth round, so it gets a little bit closer. Look, it could be a near shutout, except for the point being taken away. It wouldn't shock me, but Frenois had a little more success late. Now, I, I, Sergio, is there anything more he could have done? His corner was exhorting him, but it, to me it appeared, well, look, there's just a gap that couldn't be bridged there. Not, not against this man that we're looking at, at at the age of 28. Not now. No, not at all. He got aggressive. He put the pressure on. He, he went for the body shots. The body shots were, was going to do it, and he was digging in there. He was going for the home runs. He was putting the pressure on, boxing. I think it was a complete performance by Farmer. He just didn't get the stoppage. All right, let's go to the ring and get the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here in Dallas, Texas, we go to the judges' score totals. Ellis Johnson, 119-108. Javier Alvarez and Daniel Sandoval both scored it out 116 to 111. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And